All right, welcome to another episode of the Getting to Club podcast. This is the show where in 15 minutes or less, you get to steal the playbooks of the top B2B tech sales practitioners on the planet, the top 0.01%. Sometimes I interview them, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just share out the learnings I get from talking with them. But today, you get to hear directly from me interviewing Florin Tatulia, who is one of the world's top experts at the moment and cold yeah. outbound email and cold outbound email sequences, sequencing strategies for B2B tech companies. So Florin, I'm going to let you introduce yourself. You have a lot of highlights that qualify to you to be such an expert in this space. Tell us about some of this. Yeah, Chris, it's really great to be here. So Florin Tatuli here, uh, currently the director of sales at Barley and I've been in the, the trenches. I even have a newsletter called Prospecting from the Trenches, which I, I pride myself on. So uh, for the last 10 years, I've been uh, booking meetings and even as a leader, tried to be one that like led the way for my teams and continued to sharpen my skills. So uh, I'm one that likes to actually walk the talk. So uh, in my current role as director of sales, already booked over 100 meetings in the short times that I've been there. I've booked thousands of meetings across my uh, career and, and led sales development teams that have built millions of dollars of, of pipeline. And more recently, in the last two years, I've also done some advising and also built out workshops where I've trained over 50 uh, of the leading SaaS organizations in the world from reps at Shopify, Zendesk, uh, Live Person, to, to name a few. So yeah, super excited to be here and uh, to release the course. So you're also a LinkedIn top voice, right? So you've got a well, few other highlights worth uh, <laughs> sharing with the group. Top voice in LinkedIn in 2023. <laughs> A few other things that I'm going to say about Florin is he rose from SDR to senior director of SDR in a way where he broke the Thank career you. curve. Okay, he was so successful at booking meetings that he was able to rise through the ranks very rapidly. And like he said, he's now leading sales over at Barley as director of sales. So Florin, you did a course with us recently, Cold Email Conversion Machine. And you spent the first few minutes of that course talking about why cold email and why it's so critical to get that right today. Tell us your thoughts on that. Yeah, I think it's a very uh, fundamental time right now for salespeople. I think it's no surprise that 2023 has been harder on sales reps in general than in the past. I think a lot of people have gotten used to being order takers, especially account executives where uh, prospects were coming inbound and demos were being booked for you by uh, SDRs. And I've talked to probably dozens of sales leaders this uh, year alone, and that's just no longer the case. So. A lot of AEs that have not been able to, or have not sharpened their prospecting skills in years are starting to get back into it and realizing how difficult it is. And SDRs that are just joining the workforce now are finding it uh, really difficult as well. So that's kind of why this timing is so important uh, of when we release this course and really why cold email and, and copywriting and sequencing. So apart from the fact that we can't rely on inbound right now, I think another fundamental shift that's happening right now in 2023 is around uh, artificial intelligence. And what I'm noticing is that the skills gap is actually getting larger because people are relying on AI and technology as opposed to thinking through like, what are the actual fundamental skill sets that we need to connect with humans? Uh, copywriting is one of them, like storytelling, um, just to, to name a few there. Yeah, I, I want to ask you about those uh, in just a couple minutes here. But I, you know, I hard agree that copywriting is one of the most yeah. underrated skills <laughs> as a professional seller, right? A lot of people don't know this because you know I talk mostly about sales and sales leadership on LinkedIn and what have you. But earlier in my career, uh, I studied direct response copywriting pretty intensively, right? Like Gary Halbert and Dan Kennedy and. And some of these like classic direct response marketers, uh, in fact, I found the 20 best um, direct response ads of all time that were written by, you know, uh, I can't remember his name. He was one of the like advertising guys in the 1960s. And I wrote them down word for word just so I could like seep in some of the language. And that skill has served me incredibly well as a sales leader. So huge proponent of copywriting. Now, in the course, one of the like kind of precursors you have to the course is this entire section on 10 laws of successful cold email copywriting. I don't think we're going to have time to talk about all 10 of them, but tell us, you know, maybe your top three to four, explain what they are, why they're important. And, you know, maybe they choose the ones that 
uh, people most need to hear as a result of the economic climate. Yeah, and the ten laws of copywriting I actually got from Dave Gearhart, who was the chief marketing officer at uh, Drift and a few other companies, super successful, excellent copywriter. Uh, yeah, so I didn't I didn't come up with the, the laws of copywriting, obviously, but just like you, I'm one that wants to study these types of things like human psychology, copywriting. I think we have a lot of salespeople to learn from marketing and a lot of the times we forget about that. So that's where I got the 10 laws, but some that really stick out to me. So probably the most fundamental one is telling a great story. And uh, we learn concepts. I think our, our brains are wired to learn concepts through storytelling. It's why religion, mythology, it's how we like books for children. It's all to all the concepts that we learn as we grow up are told in stories because of that. So what I've been thinking about is like, how do you apply storytelling to uh, a cold email where you really only have a few seconds to uh, get someone's attention, right? So I, you can't go into the beginning, middle, end. You can't have protagonists and antagonists and all that. But we've been able to boil it down to really two things. So what is the current state? What's the problem with the way your prospect is doing something today? And then to uh, the vision in the future, like what does the future state look like? And uh, how can you narrate that uh, story in a compelling way? Yeah, and me, yeah. Uh, oh, no, keep going. No, I was going to go to another law, but if you had a thought well, yeah, there. Let me riff on that one for a second. One of the things I've noticed about some of the most successful cold emails is they don't say a damn thing about the product, right? Yeah. They capture the pain better than a buyer can articulate it themselves. In fact, that's probably some of the best to go to market advice I've ever gotten in my career, which is if you can articulate your buyer's pain or their problem better than they can describe it themselves, you'll automatically ration up your reply rates, your response rates, or if you're selling live to live, you'll automatically close more deals. Um, the last 100%. thing I'll say about this one is I've noticed when I write LinkedIn posts in a story format, they tend to take off far more than like if I'm just giving like tips or something like that. And I learned that from a guy who probably nobody listening to this show knows. Um, his name is Russell Brunson. He's one of the most like famous modern direct response marketers. He runs a business called ClickFunnels and he has uh, this framework called Hook Story Offer. And I've kind of translated that into my own day-to-day -day operations and it works incredibly well. And it sounds like you have your own framework, which is current state, future state, and kind of telling a narrative between um, the gap between those two. So I cut you off here. Tell us about some of the other uh, laws of copywriting that resonate with you. Yeah, I think another one is nailing the subject line, uh, which I think is super important. It's the subject line in addition to the preview sentence that uh, is included in that preview in, in an inbox, right? Listen. And I actually just wrote, wrote a LinkedIn post about this, but I was uh, I listened to Mark Cuban on a podcast the other day, and he literally said, I forgot how they got into the topic, but he gets about over a thousand emails a day, he uh, estimates. And he was like, the only reason I respond to someone or whether I like put it into the archive and delete the email is based off of that preview sentence. So like that is just such a fundamental part of your success, especially in cold emailing somebody and understanding how busy executives are, how much noise they get in their inbox and, and just like cutting through the fluff and getting right into it with an observation uh, I think is absolutely key. Do you have any tips for either subject lines or preview sentences that you want to leave the listeners with? Yeah, I think for for subject lines, what I've noticed, and I've tested a ton of different ones, the ones that have personally gotten me 90% plus opens, which is well above the norm, is usually calling out direct reports of the prospect by name. So let's say I'm reaching out to like a VP of sales. Um, I'm going to do some research find two people that report to that VP of sales by first name on LinkedIn that uh, are somehow tied to the problem I'm talking about. And then also provoking the cost of inaction uh, a little bit in the the subject line as well to get that person very curious as to like, what what is this person talking about? It sounds like they know me. Uh, I want to click and open that email. Yeah, I think I remember one of the examples you use in the course is there was a woman named Corinne who reports to the person that you were prospecting <laughs> and it said something like, what would happen if Corinne left or something like that? So a uh, great actionable tip that people can start using, right? You got to make sure that people actually report to the person that you're reaching out to. So you probably got to do a little bit of research, but that's an awesome one. Uh, in the course, you also start to break down, I think it's a four step cold email framework. Maybe there's like a fifth optional step if I'm remembering right. Do you yeah. want to walk us through that real quick and give us some advice on how we can implement that to boost our response rates? Yeah. 
Yeah, so the framework is very straightforward, and I have now used this for th at three different companies across three different uh, types of personas. So that's I've sold into sales, I've sold into engineering, now I'm selling into HR, and it's worked across the board. So it's not like a one hit wonder. So that's why I, I've I'm so pumped it to share that, and it's been successful in the trenches. So the first sentence, it, it, I break down in a cold email to four sentences, really. Mm -hmm. So the first one is the context for why you're reaching out or a trigger. So what kind of observation do you have about this account or this person as to why you're actually reaching out to them? Cut the formalities, no, like, hope you're doing well or uh, apologizing for reaching out. I noticed like a lot of junior reps make these types of mistakes. Just get into that observation right away. The second sentence and the third sentence are where the story comes into play, which is really uh, that third law of copywriting. So it's the the current state. Uh, be able to articulate the problem better than the prospect can to themselves, mm -hmm. right? The third sentence is going to be the future state. So, and try to tell that as a narrative, like a, a, as a story uh, uh -huh. and adding relevant social proof there, I think is very important. And that's also another law of copywriting. And then finishing off with, uh, an interest-based CTA. So uh, wanting to spark a conversation and not going, especially for a cold prospect, like trying to book a meeting right away and be too salesy, I, we tend to find that that doesn't work uh, uh, very well. And then there is an optional fifth sentence where it's like a PS statement. So if you do want to you know, call out something on their LinkedIn profile or some kind of research that's not very relevant to your solution or the context of that email, I find that that PS statement is a very good place to do that. It's like a great placeholder to put some of your personalization, it sounds like. Exactly. I, I, in, in, as opposed to trying to build that personalization into some crazy analogy, which I yeah. tend to find can work well, but I noticed for myself, it usually takes me like 20 minutes to try to yeah, you spend come up with that. Yeah, writing an email. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it, it just doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. One of the, some of those old school copywriters that I mentioned earlier. Um, I have no idea where they like get their data or numbers for, but they make the case that the PS line in most sales letters, which is their version of copywriting, yeah. gets read more than anything else. I was reading uh, a guy named Frank Kern, who's another direct response marketer, huge sales, letter, huge, multi, multi page. And I go straight to the end of it just to see like what the offer is. And it goes, P.S. It starts with this. P.S. If you're one of those people like me who just skips straight to the end. And then he goes on to summarize the offer, uh, which I thought was brilliant. I don't think that's going to work for cold email, right? Because you can see the entire cold email yeah. in like, you know, a single pane or um, just on your laptop. Well, I, we're, I think we're getting pretty close to the end here. What other tips or any other tips you have for helping people succeed more with cold email, right? whether they're deliverability tips or sequencing <laughs> tips. If you give like one more piece of advice within the next two or three minutes, what would you anchor to? I'd probably anchor to sequencing, which is another big section of the, uh, the course. And again, like I've just been obsessed with testing sequences over the last uh, decade and I'm continuing to this day to try things out. Uh, a, a few tips. So Obviously, one cold email is great, but you don't want to anchor to just one message. So I think it's important that you have a sequence that's multi-channel. So that always is going to include cold calls. It's always going to include emails, but also uh, LinkedIn uh, as well. And I think a, a few things as well there with sequencing. I think multi-touch days are very important. So having bursts where you do an email, a call, uh, and then also LinkedIn step in one day. Right. And the whole the whole idea to me, it's almost like a retargeted ad. Like you want to let the prospect know that you're there, but then also give them multiple mediums to speak, to potentially respond to you on. So whatever their preferred method is. And it's very difficult to know what people prefer. Like some people are never, ever, ever going to pick up the phone yeah. or someone yeah. like my founder who actually just like always picks up the phone because he doesn't know who it's going to be. So he just like gets, he gets like 15 cold calls a day and he just picks up, but not everyone's like that, right? Yeah. Uh, so you just have to give people a chance to get back to you. And then another thing is having sequences that are long enough uh, to give prospects a chance to respond to you. And what I mean by that is maybe you might have like the absolute best uh, email in the world, but what if that person is like in a board meeting or they're at the hospital or they're on vacation? Like you need to be able to spread out your sequence and touch points over a certain amount of, of days to give that prospect the chance to actually get back to you uh, or even remind them that like, hey, you're, like you, I messaged you with this, uh, you didn't respond and, and make sure that you give yourself the highest probability of getting some form uh, of a response. And yeah. 
Yeah. The last thing I'll say, or sorry, go ahead. No, go for it. So in my opinion, the point of a sequence is also to get a yes or a no. Like the worst thing that can happen to you as a sales rep is like this indecision or or a maybe, right? And I I think that pertains to a sales cycle as well. But I notice a lot of people waste uh, their time going after prospects that are never going to respond to them. So you want to be a little bit aggressive in a sense because you want to get a yes or a no or at least facilitate some conversation and objection so that you can, you know, decide from there whether that objection is something you're going to try to overcome in, in a way or whether maybe it's best for you to move on and just focus on prospects that are actually going to buy. Yeah, uh, it reminds me of uh, a post that I think you had, you and I had an er- interaction yeah. about uh, about Charlie Munger and at the time his head of sales, Chet Holmes. So this, as the story goes, Charlie yeah. asks Chet, yeah. Are we lying, cheating, or stealing? Because I've never seen growth this fast. And it turns out what Chet did is when he first took over this head of sales job for one of Charlie's mm-hmm. magazines, they were dead last, right? They were 15 out of 15 in terms of market share in their industry. And he did a little analysis. He found that there were 2,000 spenders in their category, people buying advertising that they could target. And 167 of those 2,000 made up 95% of the revenue. So he just like trashed the others out of the 167 and he designed like a very long-term multi-month drumbeat of campaigns at the time, you know, email didn't exist. So he was doing direct response, following it up with a fax, following it up with a, um, with a phone call. And as the story goes after month four, he got zero responses at month five, he landed his first one Xerox, right? Biggest deal in company history. And then. It snowballed where after three years, he doubled sales for three years in a row just with this one strategy. Um, And he ended up acquiring all 167 out of 167 of those target accounts. So that's kind of an old school story that illustrates the modern value of what you're talking about, which is putting together cold email sequences over a long period of time over many channels. So I think that puts us at time... um, one of the things I want to make the point of is Florin, like we uh, talked about, uh, uh, completed yeah, a course with yeah. us, an online course yeah. called Cold Email Conversion yeah. Machine. And yeah. it is how you break through the yeah. noise and clutter and yeah. supercharge your pipeline in a way that you haven't seen before, right? He goes deep uh, into the laws of copywriting as it applies to cold email. He goes deep yeah. into how to structure cold emails. But then he doesn't leave you there. He goes deep in how to build sequences that have a much, much higher chance of landing meetings with your qualified buyers. And he even goes into things like deliverability. He leaves nothing to chance in making sure you're going to be successful with cold email. So if that resonates with you, I would encourage everybody to go over to our website pclub.io, pclub.io, right? Short for President's Club. Go to the courses tab. Uh, on the website, you'll see Florin's course there. Go check it out. It's one of our better courses. And I think that's everything. I'll see you all in the next episode. Thank you.